Oh, thank you so much. So go out there and enjoy your weekend. Just make sure, make sure that you're wrapped up by 8.30 on Sunday evening when the box play. <laughs> um, of course, we've had an opportunity to get behind these incredible players on a different level with the Rugby World Cup. And one player who has a massive amount on his shoulders now is Dion Andre Fori, a rugby force from South Africa who shines in the hooker and loose forward roles. We'll forgive him one skew line out throwing, okay? <laughs> Renowned for his relentless ruck prowess, he really has up his game there. He's etched his name in rugby history as the oldest Springbok debutant. We love the sound of that. So join us as we take a closer look at the remarkable journey culminating in the 2023 Rugby World Cup squad in France. I have a feeling he's got a role to play from Western Province to Lyon and back. This story is amazing. John Fury, we love this guy. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. And we've seen how he plays. I love the fact that he came back to Cape Town, though. Yeah. Um, because he, he just brings that sense of leadership in the team. And tenacity. Yeah. He plays with kind of a yeah. youthful exuberance that would most, put most of the youth out there to shame. But it all had to begin somewhere. And his remarkable journey in rugby culminated in an extraordinary feat, becoming the oldest Springbok debutant on the 9th of July in 2022. Even as I'm saying it, it sounds amazing. I feel like I've been talking about him for so long. Well, it was at 35 years old, nine months and 14 days young, to be exact. And he rose from the bench at Toyota Stadium in Bloom to become Springbok number 926. And I think his dedication has certainly earned him a ton of fans. He's versatile on the field, so we know he can play hooker and he, we kind of need him now. He's a loose forward and he also played a very rare blend of versatility and adaptability. He can kind of slot in in so many different spaces, possibly harking back to his sevens days. Exceptional work rate and he is over that yeah. ball. He is going to need all of those skills right now because he is going to be thrust back into that hooker position. We know <laughs> yeah. that now. Um, and we know that we're going to need him over the ball like we'd need Malcolm to yeah. be chasing after those yeah. particular balls. He's going to have to run. He's going to have to tackle. This yeah. is his time to shine. And it kind of follows his arc. And yes. now would be his time being the oldest player. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. When other players are retiring, he's making his he's day. He's getting be better. And he's yeah. getting better. He's aging like fine wine, if I can put it, you know, simply like that. And and he's absolutely amazing. And, you know, when, when, when other players watch the likes of Malcolm Marks over the ball, you know, now you've got Malcolm Marks 2.0. Someone that yeah. comes in He's a, he's a typical bulldog yeah, on the rugby he's got field. The low centre of gravity, he, strong. Yes, and that scrum as well, because now players need to adjust themselves in the opposition to go lower. So they've now adjusted him with the shorter props. Um, I love it, man. <laughs> and it does give them options. And this is where you begin to understand this whole bomb squad notion yeah. hasn't been quite as risky or crazy as we thought. <laughs> the game needs the forwards. The game needs the tight five. Yeah. Without them, you can't play. A backline player, I hate to say it, as much as I love the fact that they get to shine, <laughs> um, you can take one off and the play Watch can your words. continue. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They're just in the structure. So I get how important it is to have these guys that can blend. How important yeah. is it he spent time in France, he spent... Yeah. A lot of time in the Northern Hemisphere, but he chose to come back to Western Province where he's played a major role in their Curry Cup glory, of course. How important yeah. is it these players that have chosen to come back, how much did his game improve playing Northern Hemisphere rugby and how important is that for the Springboks right now? Yeah, unbelievable experience that he's gained, especially with the World Cup. So he's kind of played it. He in the right direction, perfectly. you know, he played it perfectly <laughs> in the right direction. And he knows the, the structures that they have in France and in the Northern Hemisphere. But then he also comes with that versatility of playing sevens. So I'm thinking, are we going to do what we, what everyone's been saying about Kwaha and putting him in the back line? Should he well, need could. To be? And that's the nice thing about how the game is moving in a high performance way is the fact that players are becoming so versatile, they could play not just one or two, but three positions now. I love you it. Know? And, and who do we thank? Seven yeah. <laughs> rugby, baby. I think the fact that a lot of these guys yeah. have that grounding, that free-flowing yes. kind of open play defensive mindset, that's how the spring yeah. play. Yeah, adds, adds to it. Absolutely beautiful, buddy. Oh, you've done so well with us. We love Dion so much.